We were well into November, and the weather was starting to turn very cold, but I still had lots of work to do on my structure. The roof was now on, and the tarps were protecting it from the weather, so now I could focus on framing in the walls, doors, and windows. I started by adding crossbeams on top of the two door jams. Then I moved in to framing in some windows in a very skinny part of the west wall. Thankfully, I was able to find some nice sized windows at the resource center in Missoula. I've done a fair bit of traditional framing and carpentry in the past, so for the first time in this project, I was kind of in familiar territory. It also felt good to be adding such a cool visual element into my design. Once this was done, I had to sink yet another post to support a window on the east side, which of course meant more tamping with the rock bar. I test fit the log into place, and then I cut a small notch to support it using a technique that I learned here at Wheaton Labs last summer when I was visiting. First you use a chainsaw to make many small cuts right next to each other at the depth you want your notch to be. Then you use a hatchet to break off the fins and smooth out the notch. It's certainly not as precise as using a hammer and chisel, but it is a lot quicker. I tested the log once more and it fit quite nicely. Of course, holding it up and screwing it into place by yourself is another challenge, but the notch held up one end and then a quick tap of the hammer on a lag bolt and the other held that end up. Then I was free to secure it in place with construction screws and the lag bolt. And next came a cross beam for the bottom of the window, which I notched to fit over the post and gently nudged into place using a sledgehammer. The construction screws were starting to get kind of expensive, so I only used them when necessary. In other places, I used large metal spikes, which were a bit cheaper. One more for good measure. Finally, it was time to start putting up the walls of the house. And this part below the window is actually going to be earth sheltered, so this will be shoring, holding back a mass of dirt that will sit below the window and provide a good measure of insulation. Then it was time to install the siding on the rest of the wall. I decided that starting at the top and following the angle of the roof would make everything much easier. It also turned out to look kind of cool. So from now on, I'm just going to say I planned it that way. I also took some time to install some more angle bracing inside the structure, which will hopefully help stiffen up the building and help support all that dirt up on the roof. When most of the siding was done, I moved into building a frame for the window. Hey look, it fits! I set this frame temporarily into the structure and then used it as a guide to cut a window sized hole into the new siding. I was really starting to enjoy using this little cordless electric chainsaw made by steel. I tried a few and this one seems to be the best. A big thank you goes out to all those who helped donate this saw to the ant village. Once the hole was cut, I installed the window into the frame and set it into the structure. The frame of this window is actually floating inside the structure and is just held in place by boards on both sides of the poles. I did this because the building will likely settle once it is buried in earth. In this way, the windows can shift in place instead of being squeezed and broken. I use the same method in this door frame so that it doesn't get pinched shut if the building settles. I found an old storm door in the boneyard, which Paul agreed to give me. I'd like to put a much thicker door on in the future, but this one will work fine for now. And I certainly couldn't beat the price. It was super easy to install. And it felt really good to open the door for the first time in a house I had built with my own two hands. As the snow continued to fall, I started to watch my house come to life. I moved on to completing the south wall. And again, the electric chainsaw proved quite useful for making these trimming cuts. In many ways, it's better than a circular saw. Then I was ready to build the frame for these two south facing windows. I had a bit of trouble holding the board up there and finally did manage to get it installed, but I was starting to realize the immense value of a helper. Thankfully, I also realized the value of scaffolding and so built myself some to make this job a hell of a lot easier. 
I quickly got the frames built and then went and found my neighbor Josh to help me get the windows put in. Once they were installed, the house started taking on a whole new look. I quickly found myself imagining sitting up in my loft reading a book by the window light. A little bit of daydreaming and then back to work. The little ankle wall went up pretty quick, except for a small strip in the middle that didn't quite meet up. So once again, it was back to the chainsaw, as I found that it was actually quite easy to make these long straight cuts. Plus, my cordless electric circular saw just doesn't have the power to do this. A little bit of help from the hammer, and the ankle wall was finished. Lastly, I had this little space to cover. I decided to squeeze a little extra room inside by adding a small vertical space in the bottom. I installed supports for these boards, trimmed off a bit more siding, and then got to work covering up the space with scrap pieces of 2x6. At this point, I was just about out of materials and found myself scrounging for screws to get these last boards installed. I was also worn out and tired after working for three weeks straight, but the reward was well worth it. I got to stand inside of a house I had designed and built myself. It's not very big, and it's nowhere near finished, but it is most certainly my house.